So the floor, floor is open for our candidate, Kainde Shogunle. Thank you. OK, hello. Good evening. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm not really, I wasn't at the meeting this morning because I'm not in Nigeria now. I'm actually in the UK. Um, but uh, it's been, I've been, it's been a, quite a busy day, too. Um, it's a pleasure being here. And uh, I've met some of the officials of the Peter Obi Liberation Movement, and I would like to commend their tenacity, their enthusiasm for this whole uh, movement, particularly getting making sure that it's not just about Peter Obi, it's about making sure that we have good governance in Nigeria. And that is something that some of us actually subscribe to. Um, my name is Ken, the Anthony Ken, the Shubule. I'm a teller accountant. Uh, management consultants and organizational development um, experts. And um, we've been interested in this whole process of uh, governance. As we, the whole test got stirred up around 1993 during MQO's, MQO's time. That's when some of us have started having some hopes about Nigeria, uh, despite the experience of the military rule. And then with somebody like him coming up all over the country, uh, we believe that uh, something different will happen. But 30 years down the line, we're still on the same, it's like we're marching on the same spot. Uh, between 93 and 96, uh, some of us um, joined what they call the concerned professionals in Nigeria, uh, advocating for um, the ascendance of the democracy, the end to military rule. Uh, people like Pat Tumi were our leaders at that time. And uh, whilst uh, Mabacha was there, uh, we participated in the Vision 2010. I think the thinking around that Vision 2010 then was to make sure that uh, whilst we couldn't get democratic rule that was put in 93, and the one way or the other, Abacha got to government, even before Abacha got to government, when Shoneko was there, <coughs> the interim government, uh, we realized that we need to begin to focus on the economy because uh, at the end of the day, Governance will be good, democratic governance will be good, but it boils down to the economy at the end of the day. So um, we, we, as concerned professionals, and um, so and uh, we aligned with that thinking that um, irrespective of the kind of governance we have, let us make sure that the economy is stable. And I think uh, during that time, you can see that uh, given the kind of policies that was uh, uh, suggested to the government then, that the economy was already be stable. What we are hearing, to, what we are seeing today is a, 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 an economy that has gone into kaput. With the dollar is saving for more than 700 uh, naira. Um, the, our debt stock, our earnings at, at, the, at the federal level uh, going far beyond our, uh, below our debt servicing. And quite the unemployment, inflation, everything at the, at the very um, undesirable levels. It shows that uh, we have not really moving, we have not really moving forward. But between 94 and 95 and 96, even up to 98, um, the Nigeria Economic Summit Group and the Vision 2010 was quite um, topical. Um, the private sector people got together to say, well, how can we just take the economy down, even without uh, democratic government? Well, in the press of doing that also, um, how do we make sure that we enthrone democratic government? <laughs> quite a lot of things around that. <clears throat> it was while that was going on that we got the, um, Abacha died, Abel also died, and uh, the onset of democracy became, uh, the cry for that became very prosperous. And Abubaka came in, and then even around that period of Abubaka, uh, some of us were very active in making sure that we uh, got into a democratic government that can be sustained and that could have all the features of uh, good governance. So we worked very assiduously with uh, other professionals as consultants then to make sure that uh, the concept of democracy came up very well. 
99, some of us were quite excited. Didn't we believe that uh, Nigeria is, uh, was on the um, path of development. And we started working with the government, both at the national level and at the subnational sub sub level, to ensure that uh, all the indic indices and indicators of uh, <coughs> good governance are put in place. Um, I think my first experience, so I was probably, between that 93, 90, up to 98 and 99, I was a full-fledged management consultant. I used to work with some of the leading consulting firms. I trained with Akitola Williams and Co. I worked with Ernst and Young, and then worked with some uh, Philips Consulting, and then Ristra Consulting. So we were practically working with organizations and governments to make sure they're the best they can be. So that was... And if you see the thing for some of us as professionals at that time is that look, let's just advise them. But by 1999, we began to see that um, the caliber and the color of people that are getting to politics, they require deliberate um, intervention, particularly by professionals. And it was a bullet in the government that actually opened the gate. In his transition committee, he put quite a lot of professionals. So some of us in Lagos Access then decided to work in those uh, transition committees. And when he came in in 1999, um, 1999 2000, uh, we, I worked directly with um, as consultants to so many agencies in Lagos State government. In fact, we are talking about revenue generation in Lagos State today. It was some of the efforts that some of us put together that led to that, that moving from 600 million. So even at that time, by the time I left, I gave to the state was about four, five billion dollars per month. Now it's at the range of about 60 billion in a month. So the foundation that was laid at that time, actually for Lagos, actually um, led to a lot of things. Beyond that, we also worked in quite a lot of agencies in Lagos, LSDPC, LBIC, Bile Holdings. And we began to see that um, we can make so much noise in the private sector, but if government is doing what it's doing, it has to do right. There's so much opportunity to create jobs, to create a good um, place of life for people. And so that informed, while, whilst I was in LSDPC also, I saw that Ugo State is very close, and I come from Ugo State. That what could we be doing what Lagos State uh, was doing, particularly with the foundation that was laid by <clears throat> Jaconde, which was now energized during Tinubu's government. And I, I need to tell you that um, I see myself more as a professional than a politician. So what what parties do for me is to provide a vehicle for political activity, not necessarily for the work of good governance. So. Um, in 2003, uh, up to 2000, between 20, 2001 and 2003, I worked to, to in the campaign organization of Fuji, uh, who was the governor of Fuji State. And uh, I was the, uh, one of the people that made the first set of presentations to any group of people that Fuji was going to contest. And I was in the more background, the, uh, the core committee that set up the, that did the manifesto and the blueprints for both his campaign and even his government. So it became quite easy that after when he got, when he won the election, he just called on me to come and work in his office um, as Director General Bureau of Management and Budget. So I did that for eight years, for four years. And after four years, I was uh, made the Commissioner for Finance in the United States. Um, and uh, working that, working with budget and finance, gave me very in-depth in, in knowledge and experience about governance in the state. Yeah. And, and for eight years, I was in the executive council and I read all the facts, but there was no I, the, the literature or the, any knowledge about the government that I can't say that there's any, but apart from the government, there's no other person that knows that much about what you know about how the government was formed and how it was wrong. So that gave good insights and also coming from a consulting background, I could say that um, <clears throat> I began to see why governments can succeed and why government can fail. Um, and then how things are, can be done a lot better. It coming from a quality mindset, uh, an efficiency mindset, a productivity mindset. So, and uh, how to achieve equity, balance, and also achieve results um, in governments. So I, actually, I prefer to work behind and work with people and all of that. In 2011, when he was um, finishing the second term, naturally, um, we want a successor. So we also work with the successor. If I, actually, I, could, if I, I was offered almost two or three times to come and contest 2011, but I just felt that the political equation then did not for me. Um, and the favorite is Muslim, 
and somebody from Logo West. So I allowed it to wrap and I was the chief strategist for the person, uh, for GNI at that time. So we ran 2011, but the Water Dynamics didn't pay us. 2015, it also didn't pay. Uh, between 2011 and 2015, we're recognizing the caliber of people that play politics and realizing that um, we needed a different kind of people to play the kind of politics we wanted to be, particularly developmental politics. I suggested to UGD then that we should set up a political academy. So I set up the academy and we trained quite a lot of politicians at that time. Imagine politicians today, I think we trained about 1,500 over a space of uh, like 10, 15 months. And um, a lot of them are in all the parties in the state today. So at that time, <clears throat> at that time, we actually even use this same Labour Party. Because when we look at the platforms available, we couldn't use PDP, we couldn't use it, it was still APC then. I don't know if APC is the same, they are trying there. We decided to fly with a new party. And the APC became, the uh, Labour Party became very popular between 2015, 2016. Uh, no, between 20, 2013, 2014, 2015. But we got to the time when we were about to go for the election. Um, the politicians came in again and said, look, ah, we can't fly with a small party. Let's go and join the big, big one. Uh, Jonathan is going to spend a lot of money. And they, they, some of us felt that we, we can bridge a new party, we can develop them. But eventually, you know, majority will have their uh, way while Matthew and Marcy will have their say. So we decided to go to PGP. Despite that, we lost. And then we, I just asked to look, I'm not going to go into any of these things again. Let me just face my professional uh, career. And since then, I've been to technology, I've been to entrepreneurship. Employ employability and all of that, but always having an eye on government because you see, apart from the fact that um, if you want to impact lives, you just have to impact, make sure that government runs very well. And the uh, government can influence quite a lot of things. Um, so I set up the first innovation hub in the States and uh, I've been trying to encourage young people to embrace technology because we are in a digital economy and they provide the platform for them to reach uh, the best, to be the best they can be. Um, when this government came in 2019, particularly the government in the good state now, um, I just felt I got too close to them, advised them so well, was part of the transition committee, or no, handover committee, and uh, we gave them a lot of blueprints and all of that in you know, entrepreneurship, uh, technology, job creation, quite a lot of things around that the government could have said from my experience. See, one thing that intrigued me, I think it, my own getting to this is because of, I was quite angry, recognizing that if people can access resources and can access experience and expertise, if they're not taking it, they, it appears they are not ready to make any change. So that was what actually felt the inspiration to go in and say, look, if, if it's not who, you, who, if it's not now, when? So that's why we, we started. And then one way or the other, I've, 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 all the while I've been part of the, just even a part of a group of um, a transform, people transforming situations of the third force. In 2018 or 2016 or no, 2017, um, the Nigerian intervention movement was, I, was the, I was suggested to be the coordinator of that, which I led in 2018, 2019, when the election happened. Uh, it was part of told me, the, all the people in the NCF today, and that they formed NIM then, and they were, Coordinated it. Unfortunately, there were some things that were happening at that time. Two things happened. They couldn't come up with a presidential candidate, and they couldn't come up with it. It was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. so, so they couldn't come up with a party, and they couldn't come up with a presidential candidate. And then, so this time around, I just said, look, if once we, if we want to really be an effective thought force, we need to come up with a party, and we need to come up with a candidate quickly. I think this was addressed now, and that's why we are seeing the wave now. So when this time around I called in the NCF because NIM transmitted into NCF, and I called them, look, some of us are interested in going in. They said, that would be very good. And you have what they call the credibility capital. And that uh, people like you, if you put yourself in, you'll be a good uh, candidate for, uh, for the state that you are in. Because we checked everybody and in, in making me the coordinator of uh, NIM then, it was just even, I wasn't even there. People just said that if you are looking for somebody who can uh, simplify or model the kind of ideal person that can form a thought force, it should be you. And I ran, we ran it quite well. So this time around, it happened. And then 
Um, so they said that we should go to Labour Party. Even we went to Labour Party before uh, His Excellency Peter Obi we got into Labour Party because we saw that we could make it to be the effective third, third force that we're looking for. So that's how the journey has been. One of those I need to say about all of this is that during my in, in my sojourn, and if you check us out in the state, one of those that goes for us is this credibility and integrity. Um, I was commissioner for finance. I was DG budget. I was in charge of money. You are going to say, if you want to know about what, what has been spent in the state in the in these eight years, then ask in the sugar. First of all, while we're in the administration, about for sitting due process and the accountability and transparency, at this way, I think we ran a government that can take account of itself. We first of all published during our tenure, just at the, about the end of our tenure. We published the, the 10 years accounts. Well, it has never been done. So an accounts for the state, the financial accounts for the state, and published it. And then even after, uh, despite all the challenges of VFCC, you know, our people are, when they see performing government, they don't know how the magic is done. They write a lot, a lot, a lot of petitions. And then we were able to word up all these petitions until after the administration went to 11. And my governor was actually arrested. He was in court for 11 years. It was just free this year. And uh, I was a commissioner for finance, I was a DG budget, I know about the accounts. And I never was in court for one day, standing trial. So, and, I, I used to, and I used to tell him that when it comes to finance, I'm it would be responsible. And uh, there, there was no finance charge, a charge for finance, uh, financial uh, my practices in, the, in, the, in, this, in all these cases that they ran for 11 years. So that can say you so much about um, <clears throat> What our work can stand around transparency and accountability. And after after leaving government, I performed, participated as at the very top level at key financial management, public financial management issues in Nigeria. One of the first things I did in 2013 was the Nigeria Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative uh, annual. We did for two four years. And after that, there was this thing for states. That was the National quality controller, controller for the state, for, for World Bank on the state's fiscal transparency and accountability uh, program, SIFTA as they call it. That's, that was try setting a standard for all states on what they need to do to, for effective financial management of states. So that's all that sums up to the fact that, um, apart from the fact that, uh, uh, Apart from the experience of governance, which is very rich, and the experience around economic modeling for states, there's also a very rich history of uh, transparency and accountability. And why I'm putting that forward is the fact that if funds are available, as one of us I know, funds are available to states. We could talk about the positive of funds for development. Funds are available for states if they can fulfill the conditions that are incidental to accessing funds all over the world. But, but if you don't have those conditions, you cannot get access to those funds. And the key basic funding is good governance, corporate governance, transparency, accountability. And once you are sure a track record of that, and you can back it up with a strong economic plan or development plan, people will listen to you. And those are the kind of things which we want to bring to the state that the levels at which you're operating now, particularly most states are operating at the level of what they can get from the federal allocation and the little they can get from the IGR, but we're in a digital economy now, and we believe that we, can, we need to change the models for governance, we need to significantly influence it by, uh, by technology so that we can leverage it and can um, you know, start it, so that people, entities in Nigeria can actually earn more money so that they can then address the development challenges they have. And they can, apart from earning more money, they need to also be able to access more development funding to support the infrastructural and some of the social needs that they have. So that's really what we think we can bring to government and the, with the credibility and experience that we think we have. I think this can do for, um, our, for a form of introduction. And if there are any other issues, we can begin to talk or take, take them up as time goes on. Thank you. Very Thank much. you so much for that brief um, introduction. You are indeed a man of experience. Um, Working in the financial sector, especially under government, is um, is such um, a hard thing to do, and um, you brought that into light for us. Um, I'll explain how this works. Uh, basically, it's uh, we've heard from you, 
we open the floor to anybody who wants to ask a quick question. But my question to you, before I open the floor to anybody else, would be, um, you've joined the Labour Party. We understand that there's been um, a few issues with INEC. Has this been resolved? If, if it has been resolved, please explain a bit of how it was resolved. Um, my second question would be, rural development is a very important part of governing. How do you intend to develop the rural areas of Ogun State with particular reference to the poverty within those areas at the moment? And then I'll, I'll throw the floor open to anybody else. Please, audience, please remain muted at all times if you want to ask a question or if you want to make a comment, just raise your hand and we'll be happy to select you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we just uh, two, two questions. The first one is the INEC, the pertinent one is the INEC one. I think uh, there are some, uh, just some administrative issues with the INEC. It doesn't, it doesn't have to do with us and our candidature. I think it's about uh, the timing of um, fire putting in nomination for uh, nominations. We, we had done all of that. We did our primaries June 9. And so I think there is enough room for between June 9 and uh, July 15 for them to have uh, submitted and, and uh, the portal. I think that was an issue with the portal or something like that. And uh, But I think the party and I think they are sorting that out. So I think within the next one week or so, we saw sort, we sort that out. That's not a big deal at all. So I think I think the essence of I think publishing the list of people that are uh, uh, that are filing their form is for people to to come up with omissions and uh, corrections, and I think that will be done in a very short time. So that's um, uh, so there's no no need to uh, lose sleep over that. And the, uh, just that you see, for me, it's also something that it, it impacts the momentum that is, that is gathering, the enthusiasm that people have, particularly at this time when people are, were wrapping up on on the uh, PVC registration and. And all of that. So a lot of people, you know, the people, are people in the rural areas are people communities are going to be dampened to say, ah, okay, we are our country is not even um, on any place. But I know that will be addressed. We still have a lot of time for the whole campaign. Our strategy is also very quite uh, robust around how we want to mobilize people to vote for us. Um, but I think once we get into, once we get case off, we will roll out that strategy. So the other one is on rural areas. You see, the whole thing around. I mentioned it before. The only thing, the first two things about rural reality is around um, infrastructure. And the other thing is about poverty that you mentioned. Um, it's opening up what I call the economic engine. What you see is that our rural areas have been, been very receptive and not pro that productive. Even where they work hard, the, 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 the reward for their effort is not is not uh, is not is not uh, promoted. So what what needs to be done? First thing is to make sure that you channel resources to them to develop the infrastructure that they need to actually open up. Um, that is one. The other part, and which and that can be done through effectively empowering local governments. What we see is that giving local governments autonomy, uh, it may be difficult for a state government to say it wants to cover, and that's what I'm about to also do. We want to cover all the rural areas. Most of the rural area roads are from uh, sea roads, and they fall within the purview of local government, but they don't have the required resources to actually do much about them. So roads, health centers, even primary schools, and all of that, because of the way that the funding is done, uh, you see. Normally, when we are in government, you see we run the joint account allocation committee, which is a, a joint account allocation. There's an, a direct allocation to local government. But because there are sometimes you find out that the people who are money local governments are not that either competent or, or, or aware enough. Most states government take up the responsibility for local government and they retain their funding with them and then do projects for them. And then because and and, and then because of that, they cannot address all the issues in local government. The essence of uh, federalism is to make sure that government is close to the people that you are governing. So that's why it was then devolve as much responsibility and as much resources to 
the local go the local government. But those resources should not just be from what is coming from federal education. Is for you to be able, if for that local government to be able to generate resources within their own uh, community so that they can channel it back to their to their to their to the development of their of the rural areas. So the first level is to make sure uh, whether and quickly enough because to make sure that you have competent people at the local government, only competent people manning the local government, as local government chairman. Uh, we have been very very like Adasika in uh, local government and they use party patronage rather than competence to get people into local government. And I think one of the things that the Labour Party has to do is to make sure that the, immediately the, the Labour Party gets to, we get to government, we make sure that the quality of people that amounts local government is very high. We have very good people there, uh, retired headmasters, retired nurses, retired, uh, this, uh, all of them. But we don't attract them. They now get young people who just left school who are looking for a means of employment to come and be council or some of them get to because uh, local government and local government is where you where you feel the need of the people most. A lot of our um, uh, we call them uh, community development associations are manned by competent people, but they don't get uh, to uh, political offices. So we need to encourage such, such people to get to political offices so that they can they can feel the need of the people more. The second that's getting the right people. The second is I'm making sure that you have a system of accountability at the local government. That's why the fact that you give them autonomy, if there's no accountability, it restricts their access to funding. And most, very few states, very few local governments in Nigeria have access to municipal funds. Municipal funds are, or rather municipal bonds. Those are bonds are bonds that are targeted to rural areas for development. But because they, like I said before, they have not been able to fulfill all the conditions for accessing those funds. And municipal bonds are available both, both nationally and internationally. But because our people, our local governments have not been seen to fulfill accountability uh, criteria, they cannot, they, can, they don't even see it. So what do they do? They, they get money from a federal allocation, which is also, has already been taken, away. Some, some, a chunk of it has been taken away from them. And then they resort to, and then they don't generate enough IGR. Most of the IGR has been taken away from them by the states. And then they now resort to commercial loans. You cannot use commercial loans to fund rural projects. So you then need to then, first of all, make sure that even whatever they are taking, you build up a, a system, an accountability system, and a reporting system that people can verify. One, two, that's first of all, I've, I've mentioned leadership, accountability system. The third level is to make sure that you build for each, let's say the local government level, an economic model. There is a, um, there is a process when I was in planning, budget and planning that uh, I think UNICEF that did it, community rural appraiser and plan of action, they call it. For each, each local government and the communities in each local government, you can actually do a rural appraiser to see what do they need? What is their economy alive? What do they do? And how can they um, build an economy? There's an economy purpose that says that human beings, wherever they are, by their normal action and interaction, we, we carry out the means by which they will survive and thrive. And so no matter how rural a particular economy is, you can actually build a model for it. And then utilize, and then they can make something, they can build value in that economy before, uh, before, moving, before, before moving out. Once you are not generating enough from that, that, that local rural economy, you cannot, you cannot build, you cannot develop. So we must make our leadership in the rural communities, particularly in the local government, to understand what it means to grow a rural economy. Smedan has done something, but we, have, we, don't play, we, don't, we don't work on it. They call it one local government, one product. That shows that every local government must have something, is, one, is adding value that is producing and adding value to and selling to the other, the other, another community. If, it, if a local government does not have that, that means they have more outflows than inflows. So we need to make sure that at the local government, they understand that physically. At the, at the local government, at the rural area, they understand each community understands that economic principle. If you don't have that, what you're going to be expecting is that you'll be expecting money from outside when you're not giving any more uh, uh, from outside. You may not come. So but every, it may be fish. This happened in local states. The, the, a particular community, the Abu Development, the Abu Development Community, they, they have communities, uh, clusters, and communities around fish production. 
and they've been building their capital gradually. So something that the local government do was to build an economic engine in, in, this local, in this local government. With that economic engine, they can then generate revenue for the people and then generate taxes or, or, or fees that they can then put together to, to provide um, to provide um, facilities and infrastructure that they need to have. If you don't build that model, we are just going to be saying that we're injecting money there, building roads, and there's not just building roads or building facilities that we may not have the means to do that. And we all know the position of the economy in Nigeria today with um, our, our uh, debt servicing, getting more than our uh, intelligent revenue. We can then be we can then imagine how much we go to uh, can, can get to can trickle down to the local government. So it is now going to be what I call development from below, such that what you need to have the right set of people and the right set of awareness at the community levels at the local government levels to be able to say let's get ourselves together to build an economy from a, what we call community economy that will generate the resources, that will generate value, that then, they, they, then they, when, you are, when you are generating value, that will be, that each community will then be, a, each local government to account for, so that they can even access the necessary injection of development funding for rural development. I think it's a, it's a, you can see it's a cycle that if people can understand, if you can make people understand that, then we will stand behind them as, as the state government to make sure that we provide all the safeguards, all the guarantees that are necessary for them to be able to build a viable economic concept that funders can support. And I think that's the way to do it. We, if we continue to promise, I will do, we'll do this for you. First question most people don't ask the government is, where are you going to get the money to do it? And if we cannot, we cannot solve the money equation, then we're just going to be making false promises. I am fully on board. Your coordinator is against me every hour. We talk, we have talked almost twice today or three times today. I'm fully, that's that I'm not in town. I have to go and come and fulfill a family responsibility, which I have uh, pended. And I know that once we get to the campaigns, I may not have time to do that. So I just wanted to take this time to clear that so that I'll get back to, but I'm fully on ground. I'm, I have my hairs on the ground and I'm, I'm available. So I know what we are, uh, this issue is dampening. It can dampen the enthusiasm of people, uh, this particular issue of the INEC, uh, this thing. But, but and I know and the, the, the apprehension is justified because when you look at the political situation in the state, we are the people we, they are expecting. Uh, the two parties that are available, people are, are not, uh, they've experienced them and they know the personalities they are putting forward and they know that they cannot match our personality. So they're expecting that once, they, once, we, once we show the interest and they saw that we got the ticket, everybody saying, yeah, this is a, a breath of fresh air. Are you there, Comrade Chogunle? I assured them that there's no. Well, see, the campaigns have not started, and the strategies are not on You see, a lot of the things you see now is, uh, is what I call it's a lot of noise. People will do politics, but we still have like five months to go. And when all these things are cleared, and we begin to roll out what we need to do to connect, uh, we, we, we will be assured that uh, we we are we are fully on ground. The, the structure uh, we are using to, to, to campaign, the structure we are using to mobilize, is different from the structure that people are seeing now. And uh, I don't need to mention it here, but it's very, very different. The Labour Party that we have now is not just another party. It's an institutionalized party, which is formed. And we have, we have actually probably jumped the gun. While other people are still trying to, to work, out, work it out, we already worked it out. Before I left, I've had meetings with the hierarchy of NSC. I've had meetings with the hierarchy of TUC. They have, they've accepted that the, we had their party. NSC has more than 35 unions. TUC has more than 43 unions. And they, we have had almost five interactions with them. So whether, whatever noise anybody is making, and they have said, they have seen us, we have interacted, and they said, you are the candidate for us, we believe in you. So whether, whatever INEC is doing now, they, they are just waiting for, uh, for that to be over. And they know, if, to talk to everybody in the now, they said, we know where we're going to, where we're going to vote for. We know who we are going to vote for. So 
Once this is over, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to be over uh, very soon, you will see us uh, moving uh, into the into the, into into the reckoning of the people. So whatever spread, whatever rumor, this is politics. People will spread any rumor. The APC will top up. I just got news one hour ago about what is happening in APC itself right now. Just like what is happening in PDP right now around their candidatures and all of that. And we have been with them for quite some time. So I'm not a strange person to any people in Oguste. I'm not just here. I've been in the Oguste for 21 years and campaigning for the, and working with the leading candidates, the candidates agreeing with the governments and candidates. I had written manifesto for the PDP candidates. I was close to the APC person. So the, those contesting contestants know that we are the people to, to, be, to, to, to contend with. So whatever is happening now, maybe it's even influenced by them. So just give them a, a little bit of feeling. But uh, I'm sure that once we, in, once, we, once we settle down and every, all this is settled down, uh, you will see the way the wave, wave is going to go. There are, there are so many clusters of um, stakeholders, particularly in this state. We have mapped it and uh, we're, that are already saying this is where we are going. So once that erupts, you realize that um, it is not about just being there. It's about, it's about talking to the right people and the right cluster that can bring the votes in numbers. So I can assure you that uh, we don't have any uh, doubt at all. Uh, we don't have any, we are not scared at all about uh, what, what is happening. Uh, whatever, no, and I can be reached. I can be just like, like a lot of people I can be reached. We have a secretary. Your people came to us, they had a discussion with us. Your uh, uh, engineer, Karim, or what's his name? Well, like, comes, call, talks to me at any point in time. And they, and they can also get our people on the ground. So uh, I'm not, I'm, not uh, I'm available. But I need to deal with this uh, personal matter now. And once I deal with it, I go back uh, to, to, to the fray, and then we begin to roll this the way we go, how it can be rolled. So I, I want to assure you that uh, don't have any fear. Whatever people are saying now, it can be reversed in every in a, in a GIFI. We have our own process for dealing with those things. Um, support is always needed. Polit needs support. Um, to be a member, please just leave your details in the chat. Um, our honourable um, chairman, uh, Dr. Lawson, will pick that up and get in touch with you. Um, I can assure you that Polit stands for One Nigeria. So does the Labour Party. So does our guest, Kende Shogunle, comrade Kende Shogunle, begging your pardon. So. Don't worry about anything at all. You are in good hands with the Labour Party. The change that you expect, the um, justice that you expect will come in due course. Just keep the faith. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, within the next week, uh, one week, I think that matter should be resolved because the closure of everything around the nominations should be next Friday. So I think uh, the party and I think already uh, engaging themselves on how this can be, how this will be done. Uh, and next week, I think that will be resolved. I thank you very much, Cass, for the for the for the endorsement. Uh, I do. I can. I think I can glean you from your voice who you are. But I think uh, we, I think our our be, our character speaks for us. It's like smoke; it just goes everywhere. But we thank God for giving us uh, the grace of um, of uh, of credibility. And I think that, uh, like I said, uh, uh, like we always tell people. Um, every OB voting in states contributes so much more to making him win. So, and uh, all politics is local. So, as much as possible, particularly for us, they let us let us make sure that we mobilize as much as possible. As we are voting for, as we are, as we are decide OB, you must also decide the, the candidate that they have in that in that state, so that um, everything that's up at the end of the day, uh, we we are creatures of the same of the, of the same spirit in terms of humility, in terms of economic focus, in terms of integrity, accountability, and the, and, and the, the commitment to moving Nigeria forward, uh, commitment to making Nigeria co uh, compete in the Committee of Nations. I think we share those, those values and perspectives. And I think uh, it, it just starts along at the, 
will, will be at the federal level, can be something like to the state, will be, will be a magic for our people in our part of the world. Thank you very much for the endorsement. That's Barrister Kende Shomoye. My brother, how are you? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. I'm fine. I'm fine. Excellent. Vote, Comrade Kende Shogunle. You've heard the endorsement from KAS Esquire. I'm grateful for that. I'm going to open the floor to Messi Okenwa. Um, the lady amongst us, I believe we need to hear the ladies as well. If you are there, Mercy, can you just please uh, say a, good, a few words or if you want to ask our candidate a question or two. Yeah, thank you so much. Good evening to everyone and uh, Your Excellency, good evening, sir. Uh, we, the members of police, are very, very excited when we have um, our aspirants on board with us because uh, this gives us an assurance that uh, our labor is not going to be in vain because uh, the worry we had earlier was that uh, uh, labor party were not being well represented in different states. But today we have a, a lot of uh, aspirants coming up from labor party because we know that um, His Excellency Peter will be becoming the president needs every state to deliver a uh, 2023 election. So having your personality, your person on board in Ogun State is giving us um, confidence that come 2023, this election uh, that your state will be delivered. And uh, I want to wish you well. And uh, I want to let you know that people out there love has fallen in love with Labour Party. Being a, a member of Labour Party and aspirant coming from Labour Party, by the special grace of God, the same love they have for Peter Obi is going to translate to you as well, because everybody is waiting for this change, which we believe that you are going to give Ogun State. And uh, I know that um, our people are on ground in Ogun State, to make it happen for you, sir. This is one thing we will assure you that uh, police people, uh, members are people that believe in Labour Party and believe in everyone that has come up to make this country proud and to end this cycle of doom that we have been into. Thank you so much for taking our time to be with us and to assure us that you are going to um, come out, make yourself available for the people so that uh, everybody will be aware that real change is coming to Ogun State. We really love you and appreciate you. And we're hoping to work with you in achieving your dreams. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Thank, thank you, Mercy. Amen to that prayer. Uh, thank you very uh, much. Come thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Just to say, I appreciate the kind work they have said. To also look up, up up to all the support that we need to get, but we will not disappoint to tell you and God helping us. Thank you very much. Mojishola Akinsonia, please feel free to address our candidate, uh, Comrade Kainde Shogunle. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, um, not new to the governorship candidates. We started the the movement together in Ogun State. And I'm also uh, a candidate as well. But I was out of the country in a few weeks back. I just came back to Nigeria. And some of the things I've been hearing concerning candidacy and you know, vis-a-vis -vis what happened with INEC, I'm not too happy with that. Especially looking at women in politics and the space and access we have. I'm from the CSO constituency. And if we don't believe in a candidate, we don't follow them. And this is the first time, you know, the CSO sector, we are, want to really be involved in, in the politics in Nigeria. And putting, you know, our legs into the water, we are getting some vibes that is not okay with us. 
I think the governorship candidate should do more because we have a collective mandate. As we are pushing for OB at the presidency level, so also we push for our candidate as governor. So also we, we're supposed to push for those people going for House of Rep and, and Senate. If OB is now the president and there is nobody in House of Assembly, House of Rep or Senate to push his agenda, I don't think it can be possible. So there should be you know, an informed decision, a proactive decision to also you know, state for our interests, fight for our interests in, in terms of party politics. I'm not happy with what is going on. I'm not happy that you know, the names are not being uploaded you know, on, on the INEC website. So we have to put our strategy together if we really are serious with this job or winning the election. We are coming in to win. We are not just coming in to, you know, to be there and say we are candidates. So I'm, I'm imploring and I'm begging the governorship candidate to do more proactively in terms of candidacy and INEC and party politics in Ogun State. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll let um, Comrade Kende Shogunle address this mm -hmm. as the candidate. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much, uh, Muji. Um, uh, uh, we are partners in progress, and um, uh, we are working together. Um, like I said, it's the, the issue around candidacy is uh, it's something that we, we've been working on right from the beginning. And uh, like he said, she said also, we believe that all of us are partners in development. We work towards making sure that we are not just advocating, we're also actively participating. And that's what I pull all of us together. So when we get into a new fray, a, a new terrain, the, the name of the game begins to change. Uh, we can do so much, but you know they still will play their game, and uh, we, and that's what we are all experiencing now. I'm experiencing now, and I think you have you have you have your own. Uh, you have and also a week ago we began to see your own experience. But what I'm assure, I'm assuring us is that we will all play a role. We will fight this out to to the logical conclusion. And that we will form a government that will be so inclusive, uh, gender, gender, sector, all everybody will come, we'll work together towards achieving what we want to achieve. Uh, it's, it, I know it's not going to be a tea party, that's what they always say. Uh, politics is not a tea party. We're beginning to see that it is not. And uh, we are rolling up our sleeves to go uh, that um, even within, we have, uh, we have contenders and we have interests that may not be in alignment with us. But we are, we are up to it, and we know that um, at the end of the day, we will also we will sing the, the songs of victory. So uh, we are with you all the way, and we are know we are together, and we will uh, try as much as possible to to make sure that we address the uh, shortcomings that may be here or there. Uh, I was quite shocked last week when I heard that um, our names didn't go through or some other as well. Even your own name didn't go through in some areas. But uh, we will be sure that we will work together towards uh, making sure that we address this in whatever way we can. And they will not take it lightly. We have not been taking it lightly since this thing happened. And I know that um, it will be, that's where the party, we are put the party to, to, a, to a kind of challenge on this. And they are assuring us that they will address it. Uh, but that to me on the other side is to recognize that, um, like uh, to tell people that beyond the political, and that's what, that's the transition stage we are in. Uh, we have left so many things to the people who, are, who, who claim to be political, uh, maybe professional politicians. And a lot of us, professional civil society players, um, church people, mosque people, all of that live, wish for the country to be good. And we leave the mechanics to the politician. I think this is true. what Labour Party and what is coming up to all of us now is that we have left undone what we should have done. And we are now saying we are, we are rising up to do them. And that's, what, that's the awakening that Peter Obi has actually given all of us. And we know that, uh, like we said, it's not going to be easy. But we are ready to to gather loans, loans to make sure that we deliver what we have to deliver, and we make the change that that's. But at the end of the day, what that's what what's important is creating that change. For your comments, but on uh, gender and equality, I am a an equity and equality person. I believe in the fact that we, life must be fair to all, although all fingers are not equal. But life must be we must be present people with equal opportunities. And as much as possible, if you know, I'm a father of five girls and the one boy, and I can tell you that I never treat my girls as if they are not uh, they are lesser women. If I buy their performance in school and 
and everything, you can see that they, they are also equally as strong as the as, as the boys. So as much as uh, possible, and as much as competence, uh, and I know I have related with uh, women that are very. I've worked with women. And I've related with women that are very very competent. I can assure you that I will not even do it. I will not even say thirty. But as much as we have competent women and men that can work with us, I'm not going to say it on the basis of a book, it must be this or that. As much as we have competent women and men that can follow, that can work with us to deliver what we want to deliver. And I can tell you, I work in systems that, can, that are demanding. And we can create systems that are demanding. We will make sure that, because we will make sure that we accommodate. And the people that work with me will have seen that. I don't really. Um, I'm, I'm not really, I don't really uh, favor this to this. Let's, let's put competence forward. Let's give equal opportunities and let's let people rise up to responsibilities that are given. I can, I can say it will be political to be saying, okay, 30%, 20%, irrespective of competence is first for me. And then, uh, then it becomes a, uh, we make it fair and equitable to everybody that is competent to do it. And as much as we will find, and I know that we will find very competent women uh, that we that we, that we want that will work with us to deliver what we want to do. That's all. On the on the other side, which is um, you see, I'm I'm already already reframing the model for even for politi politics. Because one of those that I found out, a lot of people believe that it's until they belong to political parties when they can participate in politics. What is coming up now, and that's what I've been to some of my associates with it. What comes out now that we have quite a lot of interest groups and stakeholders that are not members of the party, but are even doing more than the parties. The parties are when we are the ones that have it, uh, you have to come to us, and they are not doing anything to even propagate the, the, the ideals of the candidate or even the party instead that. They, because that the traditional way is that we've captured the party and everybody will have to come to us. What I've seen, particularly going forward in reflecting about how, what we have experienced thus far, is that the the non-party players are doing are more, more adept, are more determined, are more committed, that even more than, than the, I'm saying with this, with the high sense of responsibility, that even the party players. So as much as we are working, and so what one of those things we're trying to do, and I'm, I'm, in working out our strategy now, I'm realizing that we need to even work with those people a lot more than even the, what I call the, a lot more than even party structures, because they are waking up they are motivated, they are inspired, they know what they are driven and, and they are ready to work. So as much as possible, whatever support we need to give them to make sure that they deliver as much as possible. Um, we also make sure that as they are delivering, we are going to also work with targets because sometimes when you say we are working, we are working and we don't have targets that we're going to achieve. So for example, I've, delivered, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, evolved almost like five or six quarters of people that I know and working very hard on this on this whole movement, so we movement, and even the, the, the new, a movement for a new Nigeria. One is the the Ubi movement people, for which Poli belongs. The other one was at faith based organizations. They are doing so much now that they say, "Look, this is what we want to do." Civil society is doing a lot now. Unions and all of these people, and then we call private sector players who are saying, "Look, the things have to be to change." So with those five clusters, all of them. I don't know. I don't want to say okay, okay come on, until you join it below, until you join the party. That's where you can work for us. Because if once they believe in the candidate, a lot of them believe it will be a lot of them believe in us. Let us then build a structure that they can use to deliver. And, and they can speak to themselves in the language that they understand. When you begin to match them in a the political party, that's when you begin to have manage a lot of uh, a lot of issues around alignment, focus, values, and all of that. So let them work on their path and know that within their own cluster they can generate so much uh, votes because at the end of the day, what counts is votes. So as much as that happens, and because I've been in government, I've been part of people selecting the officers, commissioners, uh, functioners, and all of that. What matters is how many votes did you bring? So it was these votes, the once these people, these clusters are recognized that they are performing and they can say, this is what we are able to do and it is very viable. Then they can have positions of responsibility, particularly when they are competent. So I can guarantee, I can, when the government comes, I can guarantee that I know those who are, so it's not going to be limited. I've been part of three or four processes like that where we have to select people who work. In. It's not going to be limited to those who are in the party alone because the reasons why people rush to parties is because they believe that it's only party men that are now doing 
uh, political position. On the gender issue, competence comes first and will be as fair as possible to competent people, irrespective of the agenda that, uh, that, have, that have worked with us to deliver the result, the outcomes that we want. That, and uh, I'm very sure of that. And there, and there will not be any bias on, on, that, on that. The second is the fact that on even for, for people who are mobilizing, who are working for the, for the uh, during the election and to get towards the results, we also make sure that we, what I want to say is that we have identified about five clusters that are not necessarily within the mainstream of the party and are working on their own right now, which we need to encourage and we need to work with and we need to recognize, particularly when, uh, when, the, when, when, when we achieve our results. We see the various OB, OB movements there and there. They are quite on there. We did a synchronization meeting about a week ago where we saw in Ogo State itself we have about 21. And we are seeing that they are even working actively, more actively than even the party structure. So we continue to work with them because we can then tie results to them. We see the faith-based movements. Ogun State is the spiritual uh, headquarters of Nigeria. The major, the major, major churches and the Islamic movement are, work, are coming up to say we are working with you and all of that. And we are ready to make sure that if they are working and they have their structures, so rather than replicating them or marrying them with one existing party structure, let them work with their structure and let them deliver what they want to deliver with us. And we can make, uh, the, we, know, we know that we're achieving results for that. We have the civil society. The Moji Agustin that just talked is one of the leaders of the lead, uh, civil society in uh, Ogo State. We, we will make sure that we support to make sure that the civil society contributes its own and they get their own results. Because they also have a connection to the grassroots. We have the union itself, the union, the labor union movement. And they, we don't need to say all oh, the labor unions should now go and the people said it before, it's the big thing, everybody coming to the party. But if the process of alignment and the structure and, and, and structuring to in the party is becoming difficult, let them work, what is, let them work on their own and deliver the votes, deliver the electorate. That is what we are looking for at this point, at this point in time. And then before we talk, then the private sector players, a lot of them are saying, look, we are entrepreneurs of our life. We believe in what we are doing. We want to support you. Do we need to be part of a party before we do these things? Much as the party is the umbrella for ele election, but for votes, once they can identify the party, anybody can mobilize for votes. And all of these people, as we are engaging them, we know what their contributions are. And we can, once we know their leaders, so police, for example, has a structure now. We have a local uh, state person who's been relating with us very well. We are now part of this kind of platform. We know the kind of people that we have there. We then we must recognize that these people have contributed towards the elections. And they have a right to also participate in the government that is coming particularly when they show a lot of competence and commitment. There's no point in not allowing them. And I know people, like I said before, I've been part of processes like this before. And I know it's not only party, party people that get responsible for it. It could be anybody that the governor feels has contributed towards this election is what, and that can do the work that's at hand. And we, that, that, will, that, will, that will make that happen. Some of the things we are going to do in parallel, but to do things differently. Uh, as the campaign is going on, is that we are going to be having what I call political academies, where apart from the physical uh, sessions like this, we are going to be having physical sessions where we are going to be talking about charter. We are going to be talking about manifesto. We are going to be talking about how we are going to run government. Let everybody come in there, and people will begin to prove their own metric. We are going to be having what I call uh, shadow cabinets, where people say, okay, on education, who are the experts across the platform that are going to talk about education? And what do you think we need to have? We have our own ideas already, but let's throw it and let people, let people play ball on it. That, through that, we will know competence, so that by the first week of our government, by God's grace, by the first week, we will appoint commissioners. Because it's those people that have played at that level and have shown capacity and competence and have shown discernment that we then say, come, come and work with us. And it's not a question of, uh, it doesn't belong to my constituency. Uh, you know, it's not part of uh, our party. No, we have, the, the process will have shown that these guys that work, have worked out. So those are the kind of promises we can make to people who have contributed, either uh, female or male, or movement or party into this process of getting us into, uh, effecting the change that we really want for our country. Because we are all Nigerians and we're all entitled to contribute our parts to, at any level to, to, the, to the progress of our country. Support and contributions are welcome to pull it. It's not easy what we do. Um, if you look on the chat, we've put um, the bank details there for anybody who chooses to support. Um, every little helps, 1,000, 2,000. 
if you are able, 3,000, 4,000 will be brilliant. Please take time out to note the bank account details. And when you do uh, contribute anything, make sure you use your name um, in delivering that so we can keep an accurate record. Um, the recording of this will be made available to everybody who has attended today within the next week so you can review what you've said so you can review what our candidate has said and um, use that to move forward um, Julie Wabogu um, I know you want to say something I do apologize that time is of the essence I would love for you to say something and then say a closing prayer for us um, in this meeting Thank you very much, Madam. Um, Julie, if you want to unmute one minute, Thank then you. please say a closing prayer for us. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Julie Umukoro is the name. I am actually the deputy governor uh, candidate for Delta State. I want to thank you for this opportunity to meet with you, Your Excellency. And you. Um, we need quite a lot of this kind of synergy to help us, you know, be on the same page. I really am very happy with your answer for women inclusion. Very, very good. Um, I need to let you know that you should work closely with your woman leader for galvanizing the and uh, mobilizing grassroots women. Because of course, you know, the grassroots women may not be able to come on Zoom like we have this privilege. So um, I'll give you a little tidbit of what I'm doing with my... Oh, sorry, did we lose her? Sorry, yeah, I'll mute. Can you just unmute yourself? Um, Madam, Julie. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go on. Yeah. I started by saying that I'm Professor Julie Umukoro, the Deputy Governorship Candidate for Delta State. And I said that, uh, Your Excellency, I'm really happy that you have uh, brought us together this way. This synergy is good for us, for all of us to be on the same page. Hello. Uh, I am just also saying that I'm happy about your response for women inclusion. And I am supporting and saying that you should draw your woman leader closer to you. Um, and I'm trying to say that that will help to galvanize and mobilize um, grassroots women who you need so very much. Uh, I also want to state that one of the things we are doing is to ensure that we have women convention. Uh, I have um, slotted in women convention, you know, so that you can meet with the women and talk to them because you can get a lot of votes from that, uh, from that area. Women are, if you like, more than men, you know, when you begin to talk about um, numbers, but whether they all have PVC is another kettle of fish. But what I'm saying is that for those who have PVCs, we should encourage them to come out and um, uh, exercise their voting rights. I also want to quickly add that we should really be serious about the state level. At the state level, there is paucity of information on Labour Party. And so we must not be carried away by what is happening at the center and think that the popularity of Labour Party at the upper, uh, at, at, at the center would rub off on us. We have a lot of work to do at the state level because we are trying to have what you call a paradigm shift to ensure that those who have had a grip on the state, we are able to clinch it very, very important for us. And you know, they say habits die hard. A lot of people, you know, out of habit, now believe that this is a standing party for a particular state. There is no such thing. 
there is no such, no party is going to be side in any state. It could be uh, in, in, in this camp today and be in another camp tomorrow. And we are telling ourselves that it has to shift and come to our camp and we must work for it. So that's the little contribution I have. And everything that we think we can use a strategy to arrest the situation and draw attention to ourselves, you know, it's very, very important. There's no amount of attention you're going to draw to yourself that is too much. Rather, I think that is what we need at this point in time to sing our song, to blow our trumpet and do it in whichever way that we think we can do to uh, get people to notice us. Thank you. I think they say a word is enough for the wise. I have just said that we need to do everything to draw attention to us, whatever it, whatever it will take. I think I'll arrest my case there. And then maybe if you want me to take the closing prayer, I'll do so. I, I really do want you to take the closing prayer. But before you do that, um, it's great to have women on our platform. Um, Moji Akin Sonia, Julie Mwab. Umukoro. We are grateful. I think what we plan next is to have a session with our lady leaders. I will allow Dr. Lawson to um, contact you to organize this so we can hear from the ladies. Please take the closing prayer. I'm grateful for your time. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father Abba, Jesus, we thank you for this moment. A moment like this, we thank you for bringing like minds together. You say birds of a feather flock together. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for when there's a meeting of minds, we forge a way forward. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you said it, that when two or three are gathered, that you are there in their midst. This gathering is of God. And therefore, we want to thank you for being the head, for being the pilot, for making us be able to see the point of view of one another. Father, we thank you. We pray that you continue to facilitate this group, this movement. You started it and we know that you do not start a thing and leave it halfway. Therefore, Father, because this is of you, your making, and the, the time to arrest this country and keep this country intact, we want to pray you, Father, that we have given up ourselves as disciples, as errant people who will do this job in your name. Father, come and give us the wisdom, the blessing, the protection that we need, and help us to facilitate this movement and bring it to birth peacefully, the way you have craved it, the way you have planned it. And that way is the success of it. And that is what we're looking at, the goal. So Father, our Lord and our God, we have given up ourselves to you to use as your vessels. And we pray you to fill us with the Holy Spirit and, that, and make us be able to actualize this in real time. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Grateful for everybody. I just want to give the final say to our candidate before I close. Thank you. Comrade Kainde Shogunle, are you there? Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been a very engaging and a very uh, exciting moment with you. Uh, some of the words that uh, have been given, we are going to read, and we believe that um, we will push and push for the victory that we all deserve and build a new Nigeria through our president, Peter Obi, and some of us that are also acting in the various uh, subnational states. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless you. God bless you too. I'll make sure you get a copy of this um, so you can review for your own um, records as well. I'm grateful for everybody's time and um, until we meet again, okay. it's uh, David signing out. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.